Okay, welcome to chapter 18 on fluids. And this is just the inter introductory section. Let's jump right into it. Uh, in previous chapters, we looked at solid objects. Okay. Now, uh, in this chapter, we're going to look at an other, two other states of matter, liquids and gases. Okay. And these liquids and gases are called fluids. Why? Because they flow. Okay? So we've seen solids, now we're looking at liquids and gases. And let's do a quick comparison. Solids, the interior forces in a solid object. Okay? So now a solid object like that. The interior forces uh, uh, being exerted on the atoms inside uh, these solid objects are strong enough to keep the particles from moving relative to one another. So, so these objects, uh, solid objects, have a definite size and shape. Okay? A definite size and shape. However, liquids, <coughs> the, in, a, in a liquid, the forces exerted on the particles are not strong enough so, uh, to keep the particles from moving relative to one another. Not strong enough. So they flow. Liquids flow. They, even though they have a definite volume, they adjust to the type of container that they're in. They adjust um, to whatever they're in. So they, their, their shape changes. Even though they might have the, a, a fixed volume, their shape changes according to the, the type of container um, that it's in. Okay? So liquids and gases flow. They change shape. They flow and they change shape. Okay. Now, what is the implication of this? Well, one implication is that you can't describe uh, fluids, uh, the motion of fluids. You can't describe the motion of fluids in the same way as you describe the motion of a solid object. For example, with a solid object we would describe its motion by the center of mass, right? We had an object there, okay, we defined its center of mass, and then we would look at the velocity of the center of mass, etc. Or if it was rotation, uh, we would often, if it was, uh, you know, rotating freely, then we would consider the rotation about the center of mass. But with a fluid, because it, it changes shape and it flows, we can't define the motion of a fluid, like for example a gas or a river, in terms of a center of mass, uh, but we can specify its motion, for example a velocity, at a specific location in that fluid. Okay. So let's see here, in general, describing the motion of fluids requires an approach in which we associate quantities such as velocity, not with a body of fluid as a whole, but with a position within that body of fluid. Okay? Alright, see you in the next one.